Hello friends. Today our topic of discussion is factors affecting highway alignment. Highway alignment is the process of establishing the center line of a road. And highway alignment can be divided into two parts as horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. The horizontal alignment is seen in the plan of the road and it contains the straight path and horizontal curves. And the vertical alignment is observed in the longitudinal profile of the road and it contains vertical curves and gradient. The basic requirements of an ideal alignment between two points are that it should be number one short. It is always desired to have a shortest possible alignment between two terminal points. A straight alignment between two points would be the shortest but it is not possible always as many other factors may warrant deviation from the shortest path. But possibility of shifting the obstructions instead of alignment and the comparative economic feasibility should be examined before taking any action. The second is it should be safe. Safety along the profile during construction of the road and operation thereafter must be ensured. Safety of manpower and machinery during construction and then safety of users and vehicles should be paramount. Stability of natural hill slopes, amendment and cut slope should be considered while fixing the alignment of a road. The third is easy profile. Alignment should be such that it is easy to construct and maintain with minimum problems. A profile is considered easy if it requires minimum resources for the construction, operation and maintenance of the road and maintains the comfort and safety of the road users while traversing it. As far as possible, alignment should pass through the terrain that does not require highly specialized and sophisticated construction technology. The fourth is fulfilling the purpose. Alignment should fulfill the purpose with which it is selected. The purpose may be purely social or improving transportation network in an area or economical like providing a freight corridor or linking places of production and consumption or it may be any other purpose. The intended purpose should not be defeated at any cost. Next is aesthetics. As far as possible, alignment should improve the local aesthetics. The road should integrate with the surrounding landscape of the area. Ecology. The road alignment should not disturb the ecology and biodiversity of the area it passes through. It should cause minimum disturbance to the local flora and fauna. And finally, it should be economical. All these requirements which we have discussed so far, they should be met at minimal possible cost. Minimum cost of construction, cost of maintenance and cost of operation. And there can be several factors which can dictate the alignment of a road. And these include government planning, obligatory points, traffic, geometric design, economics and other factors. Government planning. A road project involves heavy investment and therefore it should comply with government requirements and planning. The next is obligatory points. There are two types of obligatory points. Points through which alignment should pass. These are called positive obligatory points and points through which it should not pass and these are negative obligatory points. In the category of positive obligatory points, it can be a bridge site if the alignment is to pass through a river or any other water body, then it should cross it at a point where cross section of the river is minimum. That becomes a obligatory point. Same is the case with railway crossing. Railway crossing as far as possible should be at right angle because that will provide more visibility to the road users as well as to the railway users. And therefore, many times you have to change the alignment of the road to make this crossing at right angle. Mountain pass. When the road has to cross a row of hills, mountain pass may be a suitable alternative. Mountain pass is a route that allows travel through a mountain range or over a ridge. And in that case, it is always better to follow the contour line to reach to the level of higher elevation and that is what we call the mountain pass. Then 
close to sources of embankment and pavement materials because construction of road requires huge amount of embankment material and pavement materials and therefore it is always economical to have the source of these materials very close to the highway in case of mountains in the alignment there can be two options either to go around the hill or to construct a tunnel and the alignment will change accordingly so this should also be considered whether it is economical to go around the hill or it is economical to construct a tunnel and then decide the highway alignment in small towns highway alignment may get deviated slightly in order to connect the town at a later stage and there are certain points through which it should not pass that is negative obligatory points like national parks conserved area dense forest area agricultural land all these should be avoided marshy and low lying area should be avoided and also the area which are liable to get flooded during monsoons should be avoided at all cost proximity to schools and playgrounds and hospitals villages and towns should normally be bypassed and places of worship archaeological and historical monuments cemetery etc should be avoided so these are the points through which the highway alignment should not pass next is traffic alignment should suit the traffic requirement od survey should normally be carried out in the area to estimate the traffic on the road and desired lines are drawn and the alignment should follow the desired lines volume of traffic will depend upon the importance of two places being connected plus other towns and cities to be joined later population residing within certain kilometer distance on either side of the alignment will also contribute to the traffic as a thumb rule traffic varies as the square of the population that is being served by a link next is geometric design geometric design factors such as gradient curvature side distance all these should meet the requirement of design standards and they may many a times dictate the final alignment of the road these should meet the requirement of geometric design standards and that may change the length of the road also a straight alignment is always desirable but it may require very steep gradient and therefore to avoid steep gradient like this if you connect these two points directly then you will have a steep gradient here and it may be required to make a zigzag path following the contour line of the area to meet the requirement of tooling gradient as far as possible gradient should be flat same is the case here you cannot join this point to this point directly because there is a huge difference in elevation of these two points or from a to b here and therefore you have to pre circuit this route so that you get the grading within your standards economics alignment should be such that it is economical economical in terms of construction cost operating cost and maintenance cost excessive cutting and filling must be avoided and as far as possible complex structures should be included only when they are absolutely necessary economics generally evaluated based on life cycle cost analysis that is lcca and in this process two three alternate alignments are evaluated and the one which gives the minimum overall cost is finally adopted in addition to these factors there are few more factors which should be considered while aligning a highway the first is monotony due to very long straight path in the level terrain driving becomes monotonous and it may lead to accidents small horizontal curves at suitable interval are necessary to break this monotony of driving drainage drainage consideration and hydraulic factors are also important factors that may be considered and that may govern the horizontal or vertical alignment of the road and should be considered similarly the ideology and policies of government defines the areas of importance for that government it may demand connecting few places to the road and that may change the alignment a foreign territory coming across the straight alignment may necessitate 
deviation of the horizontal alignment around the foreign land. So these are the factors which influence the highway alignment in a normal condition. So these are the factors which are generally considered while aligning a highway. But when you are dealing with hill road alignment, then certain special considerations are given for alignment in hilly area. And these are stability, accessibility, drainage pattern, resisting length and geometric standards, and land features. This stability Stability of rock mass and soil mass in hilly area is one of the most important factors. It is important to examine the characteristics of these masses and align the road along the side of the hill which is stable. Accessibility, the hilly terrain makes it difficult to construct many roads in the hilly area and therefore it is advisable to orient the profile that it benefits a good number of habitations irrespective of their size. Middle path leading to the main road may also be considered during highway alignment. The profile should be such that rolling gradient in most of its length is implemented so that it can be used by small vehicles as well as by non-motorized vehicles. The Third is drainage pattern. Drainage of the area and its pattern is another important point in hills. Locating profile along the river valley side will have advantage of gentle gradients, but it will require a large number of cross drainage structures and protection works. Side drain should run along the whole length of the road and as far as possible, natural drainage of the area should not be disturbed. The resisting length and geometric standards. Now here resisting length of a hill road is the effective length of the road considering the work required to overcome resistances. And resistances include the friction and the potential energy required to move from a lower to a higher elevation. The alignment that minimizes the resisting length is considered the most desirable. Take this example, let us say there are two points A and B and they are to be connected and if you connect them directly you get a length L0 and the height difference between these two points is H. So the total work done for a for moving a load W and with the friction F is W into F into L0 plus W into H that is potential energy. Now if you Take this equal to W into F L0 plus H upon F. Now this L0 plus H upon F is called resisting length. So total work done is W into F into resisting length. Now when you join these two points A and B directly, this gradient may be very steep beyond ruling gradient and therefore you have to increase this length. Let us say here you increase this length by X1. So total length is now L0 plus X1. And this is now the ruling gradient. Height difference is same. So now the resisting length will be L1 plus H upon F. Now L1 here is L0 plus X1. X1 is additional length above L0, which is required to bring the gradient to the ruling gradient. But in normal practice, in actual practice, it is not possible to strictly follow a uniform rate of gradient as I have shown here. Ups and downs may be necessary. In that case, length will further increase by some amount. So it is now L0 plus X2. And these are the gradients which are otherwise not required. So the height or the rise and fall which are unnecessary, that should be minimized. So in this case, the resisting length is L2 plus H plus H, capital H R by F. Now here this capital H is ineffective rise and fall along the road because the final rise is only small h. But these local ups and downs are required depending upon the ground situation. Now this is the ineffective rise and fall. So this should be minimized. So the concept of resisting length is that the alignment should be such that this resisting length is kept minimum. 
the geometry design standards for hill roads are different and therefore all these should be met next is land features physical features of the area are more important in hills than in plains in road should cross the ridge at the lowest elevation hairpin band should be as minimal as possible when it is unavoidable they should be located at stable and gentle hill slope the road should have plenty of sunlight and should not fall in shades as far as possible attempt should be to avoid falling features while aligning a road in hill area unstable hill features and areas having perennial landslides or settlement problems area subject to seepage or flow from springs or high hill channels steep hill sides area subjected to flooding or water logging areas liable to snow drift or avalanches two important points while fixing the road alignment in desert area soil characteristics and sand dunes the soil mass usually available in desert is sand and the sand is non cohesive and gradation must be checked the gradation defines the portability of sand due to heavy wind avoid locations where sand is loose and unstable and prefer areas with coarser sand locations with ridges having vegetation make a good choice for alignment sand dunes have the tendency to shift with heavy winds they also have unique pattern of movement as far as possible alignment should run parallel to the sand dunes crossing of sand dunes should be without disturbing their existing profile in the case of longitudinal sand dunes take alignment along top of a ridge and avoid locations along face of the longitudinal dunes then few points of special consideration when alignment is in problematic soils certain types of soils like expansive soil saline soil marine clay are considered problematic from road construction point of view and these soils should be stabilized stabilization should be done to gain the strength and this can be with lime or any other additive avoid locations with large salt deposits or divert the water away from the road bed marine clay is soft and compressible use ground improvement method if alignment passes through such areas and if site is under influence of fluctuating water table keep subgrade level at least 1 meter above the highest water table then alignment in water logged area if the alignment passes through water logged area then keep the height of the embankment above the level of standing water and take preventive measures such as capillary cut off or blanket below pavement to improve drainage of the water so friends these are the factors which are considered while aligning a highway in different terrain conditions thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions you can write in the comment box